Oi, oi, here we are. Top five motivations to become a dad. To understand the father mentality. What's it like to be a parent? Well, you know, whether you are a dad, whether you're thinking about becoming a dad, or a parent, I've got my top five motivations for you today. And uh, got to have a big shout out. Oh, by the way, I'm going to put in the comments, I'm going to put um, the five things and the minute, the minutes when I start talking about each one. So you can click on that. If you don't want to listen to the waffle, just get straight to the dynamite. And uh, you can just click on them and they'll be there. And it'll go, if you click on that minute, it'll go to where I'm speaking about each individual five thing. Each thing. Five things. So, the road less travelled, we're here again boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, big shout out as I was saying to my dad and to my twin brother, I was just on the phone with him there before I went on this hike, I told him today's uh, video is going to be about um, the top five motivations to become a father, to be a dad etc and uh, i asked them for a bit of an input they give me some input it was great input and they're both fathers they both they both get called dad what an amazing thing what a great thing i heard someone the other day actually little side note i heard somebody who was like a multi-millionaire successful guy talking about what it what it was in life the secret to life or the, be the best things about in life and he said i've never been called anything better in my life there's never there's never been anything cooler that's happened to me than my child, my little child saying, dad, calling me dad. Oh, and I gotta say, I completely agree. I'm a dad. My little girl's gonna be turning six next month and I'm dedicating this video to you, my love, my little piper, la la la. I love you. I said that to her the other day. I said, I love you. She says, you always say that, Dada. You always say that. I said, and I always will. I always will. But I digress. Let's get in to the top five motivations to become a dad. Well, here we go. Number one, I'm going to start with number one. Number one reason... Not in any particular order. I like to save the best to last, so keep watching. Number five, that'll be that'll be my favourite probably. But number one, they're all my favourites. Come on, I'm a dad. But number one would be ultimate death of ego, ego death. To become a dad, you will learn the the one of the best virtues, which is humility. Um, you will, uh, you know, have a death of ego for for the first time in your life probably you will love something if you've got anything about you you will love something more than you love yourself when your child enters earth side and comes into this world and you lock in with that being that person that human that you've made wow um it's gonna you know your whole world's gonna change and every decision every thought it's gonna it's gonna just be about it's gonna be about them which is an amazing thing because, you know, you've been rocking and rolling on this world and it's all been about you. And then all of a sudden, it's like, you've got this person. I remember stuff coming to me now like it does. Thank you. I remember having to pick a name for my child. That was, that was wild. I remember thinking, whoa, with, with, with her mom at the time, we were talking, it's like, wow, we've got a name, a human? Like, what a privilege. What an honor, but also what a responsibility. I've got to give someone a name. And let me tell you, it was a really cool thing that happened. My um, daughter's mother suggested to me, why don't you ask her? Why don't you ask her to give you a sign? She said that. And I remember I put my hand on her belly and I was like, hey, um, little girl or baby girl, whatever we were calling her at the time, can you give dada a sign? Can you tell me, can you send like a message? Can you send me a sign of what you want your name to be? And she did, she did. And that's a story for another day um, because you know, I'm so passionate about my little girl. I can't tell a story like that without 
having some time and I don't want this video to go on too long. We've got four other things to get through, but she did. It was amazing and we got her name and yeah, unbelievable, unbelievable, magical. So ego death, you want to get into humility, become a dad. It's going to teach you all about that. Like I said, if you've got anything about you, you're going to learn that. You're going to learn true humility and it's going to be a, a good, a really good thing for you. Okay, that was number one. Number two, what should we have as number two? Well, I just mentioned the word magic. What about that? Real life magic. Number two will be magic. You get to live forever. I never thought about this. We talk about reincarnation, right? But it's completely true. When you have a child, when you become a parent, when you become a dad and you reproduce a baby, you will see yourself in that child. It might be something they do with their feet on a night. Like me, I, I twitch my feet on a night in a certain way and my daughter does that. It could be uh, the way they carry themselves. It could be a tick. It could be the way they plait their hair. Anything, something that happen, you go, oh my word, that is me. That is me there. I'm in that child. It'll be the way they do things, the way they carry themselves, the energy, and you will realize, you'll go, whoa, I'm in there. Like DNA, blood, like energy. I am flowing all around that human. I'm in there. And your partner will see themselves in there. And then I was thinking like, what other lineage is in there? You know, great, great grandfathers, great, great grandmothers. What, you know, everybody making up the DNA. You know, it's like my daughter, she sticks her tongue out when she's concentrating all that and i used to do that as a kid all the time probably still do it now and it's like wow and you go wow this is real life magic you know unbelievable i remember my daughter being born we had a home birth again big uh, big shout out to my uh, daughter's mother again her idea to have a, a home birth she's got some good ideas hasn't she my daughter's mother just thinking about it we were up to two i'm sure there'll be more and um, it's like, so big, big shout out to my daughter's mother. Um, we had a home birth and that was amazing. That was magical to deliver my daughter and, you know, have our dogs there and have like, just in our own space, um, like it's supposed to be. And, and it was, it was true magic. And I remember saying at the time, like, what a great job. What a great undertaking from the whole team. But I remember saying, particularly about my daughter's mother. Like, if there is a God, it's a woman. I was like, it's a woman. After seeing that show, after seeing that magic, watching uh, for nine months something grow in her and then come out. And then like, I always remember like, wow, how did she know within minutes she was breastfeeding? How do babies know to do that? And it was just like real magic. It's like, wow, this is really magic. This is true magic. And I've been a part of creating it. So number two would be, you get to make some magic, you get to wish, witness magic. And that's a never ending journey. Oh, that is a never ending journey. You know, all the little things like seeing them learn how to talk, seeing them learn how to walk. The list goes on. Talk all day about this. Um, yeah, while we're talking about my uh, daughter's mother, I would like to take it to number three, which is the ultimate showing of love. It's the ultimate showing of love you can have for your partner. And her mom, mom, uh, my daughter's mum knows this and I've, I, t I tell people about it. Um, but I like and I knew, I suggested that we should have a baby. It was planned. We did all the stuff like go to the doctors, get checked out. Um, you know, and uh, but we, 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 we planned it. And I said to her, like, I, I've got this feeling inside me. And I think I've just been speaking to my brother. And I think you can only get this when you truly love somebody and you're really in love. And I knew it was like when we were like, quote unquote, making love um, and we were showing our relationship in a physical way with each other, I knew it wasn't enough to have an orgasm with her anymore. It was like, that was great and everything, but I knew in my like soul, in my being, I was like, I wanna make a baby. And I, I didn't have much qualms about telling her that. And it's funny because I've been with enough people to know that's not something that 
happened before or happens every day. Um, I'd never had that feeling before. I've never had it since. Um, and that's the only way I can liken it to, it was this feeling that was coming out of me. It was like something, I need to create something. Like uh, exactly like an orgasm, like you're with somebody, you're like, oh, I need to keep doing this. I need to keep doing this because I'm gonna have an orgasm. Exactly the same. But for me, it was like, I need to keep doing this because I, I need to make a baby. It wasn't my choice. It was something that was just in me. It was natural. It was nature. It was a showing of true love. And then to go on that journey with her was amazing. What a privilege. I can say I've always done that no matter what, you know, we went to, I went to every doctor's appointment except for, I think one. I was basically the doula. We got a doula, but a birth doula, but I was the birth doula. I loved it. It was great. And um, again, another great idea from her was we got the um, we got the birth filmed. I remember she wanted to get it filmed and a video made. And I was like, oh no, I don't know if I want to do that. Like that's real private stuff. But now I get to see that video again and it's edited down and thing, you forget things. And I can remember it through the images and pictures and it was amazing. It really was. It was beautiful and uh, yeah like now I get to have true love and see my daughter and see myself in her, see my partner in her, see our families both sides in her and know that she was made with love. Wow and, and I was reading last night, I was reading the Bible, the New Testament and John. This is just coming now from me but And I feel emotional talking about it, but he says in John, he says, God is love. Love is God. Like that is what it's all about. You know, it says that right there in plain text and what better offering, what better showing. I mean, we, we just coming to me now, I'm thinking like, whether it's, whether it happened, whether it didn't happen, whether it real or it wasn't real, no one can deny that like the ultimate sacrifice would be giving your own child for the greater God in some kind of form. So the way that was written, the way that was put there, you know, that offering, that biblical offering, I get it, I totally get it as a parent, as a dad. Um, you know. It's the power of love. Do, 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 do. You got a song out of me. It's the power of love. So there we go, we've got three. We need two more. Oh, I'm loving this hike. What we got? Let's do it. I know the last two. You're going to get taught. Number four. Ultimate, like, compassion and patience. You're going to get taught that, those virtues. Being, becoming a dad, being a parent, your kids, they're going to really test your patience. They're going to test your compassion. You know, whether that's when they're screaming and crying or misbehaving or whatever it is. You know, I remember... I was so tired when Piper was uh, was born and she was a newborn because I had like two or three jobs. I was getting it up early and um, we didn't have any family around. We didn't have any help at the time. We didn't have a nanny or... So it was just me and my uh, daughter's mum doing it, tag teaming it. Whether we were on planes, whether we were at home, whether she was breastfeeding or I was with the bottle whether we were feeding her, celebrating with her. We did it all on our own. And um, you get tired and when you're tired, man, that's tough. Especially when you've got a kid that needs that attention and they're crying. And the only way you can do it is like by, by really practicing your patience and compassion and just little things like on a practical level, like when your baby's crying, I remember I'd have this like laundry list of like, okay, is it the diaper? Is, it, is she teething? Is she hungry? Is she need? Does she, does she have gas? Does she need to be burped? Does she, has she got gas? Um, does she need like a little massage? Uh, does she need a clean? Uh, all these things, and usually it'd be one of them. But you've got to go down the list, and when you're going down that list, she's probably or he's probably the baby is screaming because guess what? It's not that it's 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 the only way they can um, it's the only way they can communicate and. Uh, that teaches you real patience. I remember like doing Marcus Aurelius, like meditations almost, like sometimes having to just say to myself, like this is like really having to go, this is not forever. Like when I was tired and getting up and 
you know, doing whatever I was doing, changing the hundredth, di thousandth diaper or whatever it was, the tenth diaper that day, and then going to work and then you know, worrying about money, worrying about things. And you've got, you know, it's tough. You you can be bickering with your partner as relationships, relationships go up and down, but you know, um, resentments can come in and things like that. And it's, it's like learning in those moments to like really uh, think of the bigger picture and have that compassion and patience and like Marcus Aurelius I like his teachings because he talks about he would like meditate on sometimes like what if these people weren't around that you loved how would you then act act accordingly in this moment now and that's a game changer for me like if you think that way like it just you, you realize like the answer is always love um and I, I, I and that's it you've got to realize like stay in this moment treat it with love it's not forever. Whatever's happening, do the best you can. And uh, yeah, and, and that's going to be another lifelong process. I'm sure like fathers or parents who are watching this with teenagers are going to be like, well, wait till they get to be a teenager. That's going to really test your patience, um, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure, you know, whatever it is, you know. Um, so yeah, that would be number four. And number five here, if you made it this far. God bless you. I love you. I love anyone who's watched this, but if you've made it this far, you've been watching this. Thank you so much. Like, share, subscribe. Yeehaw. Number five would be this. If you've got anything about you at all, having a child, becoming a parent, becoming a dad, it's going to put rocket fuel into your life. Everything you're going to do, you just need to think about your kid and it will fire you up. It'll be like putting Rocky music on. You just think about your kid. When I'm doing sprints or anything, I always think Piper's watching. She's she's cheering you on. She's saying, don't stop, Dada. Show him, Dada. Don't talk about it, Dada. Be about it, Dada. Love you for that, Piper. Thank you for that rocket fuel in my, my life. I wrote her a song, and in it, it says, I'm super fueled because of you. And I am super fueled because of you, my love. I really am. Like any dad will tell you, worth his salt. Worth, worth, worth his, worth, worth his, you know, anything about you, you will know this. I, I'm preaching to the choir, but you get fired up. You know, there's nothing better than thinking I can help. I can buy my kid a present, you know, because one day, if you, if you, if you, if you're just becoming a father or you've got a little kid, you know, they're going to ask questions. Like they're going to say like, what do you do, Dada? What, what, what have you achieved, Dada? What, what, who are you, Dad? Like, what kind of person are you, Dad? I think about that stuff all the time. That's why I've got myself right. That's why I've got myself straight. Because, again, like we talked about, ego death. I, I can't just think about me. I can't just do what I want, spend what I want, go where I want. I've got a kid, my time off. I go to Brazil. My spare money, I'm paying for flights and lawyers and child support and things like that. It is what it is. And that's um, uh, an act of love. Love is an action. It also says that in the Bible. Do the truth, you know. Don't talk about it. Be about it. And that's why I'm making this video as well. You know what I mean? The word, the word's important. And uh, I'll be going and seeing my daughter in a couple of weeks. I'm going to go over to Brazil for another two weeks. She's turning six. Can't wait for that. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm doing well in my life. Doing doing well chasing my dreams showing up when i don't always want to show up because i've got that fuel when i want to quit we all get these voices in our heads right in life like oh god give me an easier, easier softer way it says in the 12 and 12 the 12 steps so often in life we have chosen comfort over character right a lot of addicts a lot of sinners a lot of humans whether you say you're normie or not we, cho we choose comfort over character and when you've got your kid and it's like I said, if you've got anything about you, when you've got a kid and you're a dad and you're a parent, you will choose character. You will choose character because one day you're going to get asked about your actions. One day, it talks cheap. Kids always learn from an example. I'll say this again. I've had some great examples in my life. You know, big shout out to my mum. She always made Christmas fantastic. She always made us birthdays and special occasions fantastic. What an example, made, it, made us feel special. Big shout out to me dad. He was so, and he is hard working. What a worker, just gets after it. 
um, and whether that's he always was a great example with his exercise um, running and marathons and also you know just working non-stop no matter what providing for the family and that's it talks cheap and that's what you do as a parent you, you, you remember that I would give that that message make sure your example as a human as a person is deafening to your child because they will have something to say but nobody can argue with an example so use that super fuel and don't be barking orders don't be you know wasting your breath just shine your light as a parent and as a dad and, and get after it and I'm talking to myself obviously here because that's what's important that's what's gonna they're gonna remember you know what I mean when you're not around physically spiritually in body whatever it is they're gonna think about your example your example of the virtues like we talked about today love humility compassion patience the list goes on so i'm fired up if you're going to become a dad congratulations if you're thinking about becoming a dad or wanting to become a dad do it it's the next dimension it's the next dimension you're going to be catapulted into that fourth dimension right um and uh if you are a dad or a parent keep shining your light keep being a great example it's important it really is every action and with that i love you if you're watching this let's get to the top of this mountain Oi! before we say goodbye i'll take you to the top it's a bit steep here you can't probably tell that on here but we got a steep uphill drive but i'm thinking about piper yeehaw let's go speed's coming up oh easy easy there we go there we go vacuum deus vacuum deus shine bright love you vacuum deus